recording yet. There we go. Yeah, so these well, lines aren't very straight. I should have used a ruler. Um, so I'm just going to start here. I wanted to show you guys what feathering looked like. And this is really bright. It's OK. Feathering is where we are going to make straight lines. And they're going to get um, thinner. Um, I'm not pressing down as hard on my pen. And it's fading upward. So I'm starting from the bottom and um, actually like the left in a way. And I'm striking the pen. So it's making a really quick motion. And um, I'm putting more pressure down here on the bottom or on the left. And then less pressure on the right. So this has a variety of sizes of line. Um, this also has um, different lengths and different thicknesses of the line. This is called feathering. This is a really good way to do hair for a texture. So if you haven't done the texture element yet, you should be moving on to that soon. So again, they have different lengths. Um, Thomas is next. Hey, Lena, did you break up with him yet? This is recording her. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to go back and try to make this area a lot darker. So. The more paper that I'm covering with my pen or pencil or whatever I'm using to draw, um, the more area that's being covered, the darker it will look. So I'm going to just have a variety of it. So it doesn't all look like this. They're not all the same lengths. They're not all the same thicknesses. They have a variety of height and depth and width. Depth. There's no depth. This is two-dimensional. I'm letting it fade. I'm having some long lines up there, too. You can do blending like this with colored pencils, too, and it creates a really nice, smooth hair texture if we do it that way. Um, another way of doing texture, and I'm going to start from this other end so you can see where it fades and switches up, um, is doing, uh, let's see, which one should I do? Really nice, neat crosshatching. Or rather, I'll just do hatching first because it's not crossing over itself. So I'm going back and forth, and I'm making as many thick lines as I can. Um, if you went to make this go quicker, you'd use like a thicker marker, like I have right here. That would have been a smart idea for me. Again, the more paper that I draw over, the less white that's showing. The darker that area will look, the more dark value it will have. And then the more I spread these lines out, the less that's in between them, the less space that's in between them, the lighter it will look. The lighter I press down on my pen, the lighter the value will look as well. It takes some time to push and pull the value back and forth to see um, where your dark areas are and where your light areas become highlights. I usually try to make it as quick as I can, and then I go back and see, um, is there a difference between this section and this section? Do they look the same? So I try to have a dark, a medium dark, and a light, and a medium light, etc. That's not bad. Haha. <laughs> Cross hatching, and we'll spend a whole day getting to do this, guys. You should be Absolutely thrilled. With cross hatching, I like to draw at an angle, but that's just the way that I've trained my hand to draw. Um, it makes really nice crisscrosses, kind of like um, a wired fence. <coughs> and I'm going to start making my lines farther apart, pressing down lighter. Then I'm going to cross in the other direction, kind of like um, a basket weaving as well. This type of shading is done on things like your dollar bills. It's um, one way to save ink instead of going through and filling it all in like this. But again, I want as little paper showing in the part that's my darkest, so my dark, dark area. So I'm going to keep on going back and making lines over this until it looks like there's hardly any paper showing in that dark, dark area. That way, it fades out into my medium dark area. I'm doing this so gradually and so nice. Well, OK, it's not that nice. So let's not lie. I'm not fancy this morning. I'm sorry. I'm doing this so gradually that um, 
you can't like see a line to separate each of them. They should fade into each other seamlessly. And all your lines don't have to go all the way across sometimes. They stop short. That will give the illusion. I messed up which direction I was going. Yeah. That will give the illusion that it's disappearing. We use value to create um, different types of emotions. If you want it to have um, shadows, that will help it look like it's darker. You know, I'm going to stop that one. Okay. My favorite one is the crosses. So it looks like I'm using a bunch of X's. So in a way, it's like cross hatching. People call it cross hatching, but it's more like Miss mayhem. So I fill up the area with X's and I just lash them over each other. So this will create a really nice fuzzy texture. Sometimes I like to make all my lines going in the same direction and then cross over them. So it is cross hatching. It's just a way to make it look a little more chaotic, uh, more textured. It also allows it to fade more gradually. Or it's, it's easier to have an X showing than like some of these lines here. I think it makes it look a little more subtle. So if you don't have your value section covered or filled up yet, you can add rectangles or some way to show that you are practicing your value or that you know a variety of value techniques like I've shown you here. My hand is getting tired. My focus is getting lost, like some of yours. I'm not even looking at this anymore. I'm looking at Andre. What's up? So we are. We're, up. We're trying to get out. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so bored. Sorry, guys. So this takes a really long time to do with fine tip pen. This is a uniball pen. Again, you can get these in the bookstore for a good price. Last one, I'm going to use a thick marker so it doesn't take me as long. It's the stipple or pointillism. This is done by like Surratt, that Sunday in the park, Le Grand Jean. Um, so I could make my circles bigger. This is also done with Roy Lichtenstein's like comic book art, um, where you see the girl crying in the car or something like that over the phone. So I made my circles larger, and then they're going to turn into just points of the tip of my pen. Some people just call it making a bunch of dots, trying to close them up. Um, if you do this a lot with a pen, you could actually fracture the tip of your pen like I have done, and break your pen, and have it explode all over your paper and your life and everything that you were wearing. <laughs> it's a good time. That's like with a quill pen. Because uh, we, we do quill pen stuff or 2D art. And I did that in high school. I exploded a pen all over my little self. So this creates also a scale of dark to light. Ooh, I almost got that pen. Okay, I'm going to stop.